Yep. So Evan said he's not making it tonight. So. Yep. So right. it looks like we are missing Evan, but we will continue on without him. Yep. Because heck with that guy. <laughs> Can't trust him, anyways. Ooh, damn. <laughs> damn. The, the suspicions everywhere. <laughs> Makes me wonder what I missed now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. As, just talking trash. As you totally wake up from uh, all the system checks you've been doing to the ship and you realize that the rest of your crew is standing outside the ship, you're <laughs> docked on the planet on a landing platform, and you see your teammates sitting there at the airlock with the security team standing out there talking to them as uh, the camera focuses down. And uh, the camera focuses on you coming off the ship from uh, whatever project you were working on at the time going, hey, how come nobody told me we got here? <laughs> Why are you guys keeping secrets from me? Is it my birthday again? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me reset some stuff here. Uh, somebody, by the way, do an attack or something just to check to see if you can do or if I have to reset because... I did notice in one of my other groups I had to reset the API scripts for it to work. Coordination seemed to work. Okay, Weapon cool. attack seemed to work. All right, cool. I just wanted to make sure the API script didn't go, go, go kaput. As Percy's killing somebody. Wow. <laughs> Alright, and the story points are set. Yay. 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 <laughs> what? And as uh, you come on down the ramp and you hear your friends squabbling with the local security forces, what do you say? As you're in your cool little biomechanical <laughs> bowl. Uh, okay, who's going to fill me in? <laughs> um, Chet, I forget exactly where we left off, to be honest. Uh, yeah. You guys <laughs> managed to land. You got some insider Remember information that. from the trading guilds about the uh, guys up in blue there. The uh, the different managers that run the three aspects of the station. I mean, I don't even remember that. I was so burned out. <laughs> <laughs> we ended at like three thirty a.m. for me. <laughs> you mean it was after a long morning. day? <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I. Remember we landed at the station, and then yeah, I don't remember how much further we got from there. Uh, basically, you you got out, and the uh, security officer basically stopped you guys, wanting to know uh, who you are and what you were doing, and that's where we left it there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna. Add, so why are these numbskulls impeding our progress? Ooh. Wow. Damn. That's a shame. <laughs> Are you the talker? I forget who the talker is. I don't think I'm the talker. I'm generally the talker. Yeah, no, I'm not the talker. I'm just the arrogant, smart guy. Oh, yeah. I like how he just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're the talker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, somebody okay. talk our way through. So your mechanic comes out and he's like, "Hey guys, what's 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 going on?" And uh, the security officer kind of looks over your shoulder at the the aquatic gentleman stepping off the ship and says, "Yes, that's extremely eloquently put. What is going on?" As he's totally waiting for you guys to uh, identify yourselves or explain what's going on. I mean, you did use your Corellis, you know. Uh, 
information to get yourself, you know, credentials to get docked there. All right. So you probably don't want to go too far from what truth you've already established with their, their landing command and control system. As this is the moment we totally realize you guys have picked who your commander is. And we find out it's the one person who didn't come to the game today. Yep. <laughs> okay. You said he was an aquatic? I uh, know he's no, looking our at guy you is as aquatic. the aquatic. Well, I'm the aquatic. Oh, okay. So what is that what is that guy? Uh he is the same thing as your missing colleague, which may explain why he's missing. Uh he's uh one of those nice uh dark elf looking gentlemen. Oh letnev. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I got to Um that counts as mammal, head. right? That counts as mammal, yes. Okay. So uh, let I'll go out to him to accept it, but he's mammalian. <laughs> uh I'll go out to him and I will say that we are the Chemist team that has been uh, sent out here. And he just kind of looks at you with a slightly arrogant look, and he's just like, we need no Clara's team here on the planet. I am in charge of planetary security. I can assure you we are safe. Is there a reason that you are here? Uh, yeah. The, but it, what's it called? Kellis Council? Uh-huh, the Claris? Yeah. The, the the council sent us here. And he he gives you this kind of dismissive look, and why would that be? Somebody's wanting secrets. Uh, well, if you don't know, we're not allowed to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> As you say that either. in your fish tank bubble bubbles. Okay, so go ahead and um, hmm, I like where this is going. Give me a coercion roll. I got your difficulty set there. And don't forget, you got four story points. I only got one. Uh, I keep on forgetting. I can't do that. <laughs> I've got to remember, I'm like charm and negotiation. I am not coercion. I mean, you can go for a charm if you want to try it. Oh, I will definitely go for a charm. Okay. Uh, and trying to be very get... charmy, swimmy, swimmy in your fish tank. I'm really sorry, but if you don't know, we can't tell you. If you want to send... Um, you know, the query to the council and have them tell you that'd be great. Oh, see, now you're getting out of the, the, the neighborhood of charm. Are you sure you want to throw that out there? Uh, oh, well, I thought that was being charming. Uh, it sounded more bossy, middle management. -y. Oh, no, oh, okay. I thought that was a you know, I'd love to help you. Okay, that sounds a little more charming. <laughs> Okay, and um, do you have my uh, two extra blue? I do not, but I, I will get them in shortly for you. Okay, I have your two blue in there, Mr. I Study Mammals Under Extenuating Circumstances. <laughs> that semester in class, they really just watched porn all day. <laughs> oh, and somebody's going for an upgrade. Yeah, I just realized this isn't a role we want to miss. Probably not. As we screen swipe you all in jail. Oh. <laughs> that would not be good. Okay, I got your upgrade and your two blue in there. Yay! Wow! wow. So, uh, one point of stress as you have a stress fart bubble in your fish tank body. My fish tank body? Oh, oh no, no, that's right. As uh, 
you have some hairs out of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta lick those back in place. So they're perfect. And the question ruffle. is, what do you want for that triumph? Um, for the triumph, can I get him to say what he thinks his biggest security problem is? Like the, oh, yeah, I know, you're really here for the blah, blah, blah? Ooh, I will definitely give you that. That, like, pushes the story exactly. forward. I'll definitely give you that one. As uh, you, you immediately charm him, and he kind of, like, gets off his normal, arrogant Letnev attitude, and he just kind of, like, almost seems to break character at first, as uh, he, he seems to respond to, you know, obviously he's had good interactions with uh, folks of your species. <laughs> Good interactions mm. since they've been introduced. <laughs> Finally, someone not who's a rel- not relative. Yeah. Someone from off world. Ha ha. Pretty kitty. A- and he kind of like smirks <laughs> and rubs his chin as, as you're being charming. As uh, he, he he basically gives a quick little tote apology and basically tell- turns around and tells his guys to stand down as they're all doing that cop thing with their hands on their weapon belts. As he's just like. These 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 are agents of the Kaliris. We 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 don't need to to give them the wrong impression of our world, even though we have yet to join their their overreaching power. And he okay. turns around and totally gives you that Han Solo pose with his arms out, and he smiles and says, uh, you, "You must understand that uh, up until re- very recently, our planet has been very quiet." And not seen by off-worlders. And there has been a uh, very interesting mix of off-worlders that have come to the planet. And I just want to make sure that uh, you understand that uh, it is it is personally my job to make sure that this planet is kept safe. And uh, I thought uh, maybe you were here... Following up on some of the uh, Winarians that that have been skulking about the planet, and of course, when he says that, you totally remember the uh, custodians, the Winarians that basically are in charge of your organization's home planet. Green skinned, usually jet dressed, really regal. They consider mm-hmm. themselves to be in charge since they inherited the supreme races, you know, headquarters. Yep. As the since the Linux were you know extinct, a- and he just says they've been uh, traveling in groups and uh, spooking some of the locals as, as they they go about town together. Mm. A- and he totally like waves his guys down and and gives you the look of so uh, in the. Auspice of security officer helping fellow galactic security agents. What is it that I can do for you? Um, well, of course, first of all, we'd appreciate it if you don't tell everybody what we're here for. That would be a big help. And he totally glances over his shoulder and just echoes what you're saying and says, and that's an order, correct? And you immediately mm. see his different subordinates all snap to heel, and they say, aye, sir! He apparently seems to be very, very regimental in his uh, conditioning with his troops. And, well, you know, since since you've obviously got doing so good a job with this planet, um, could you tell us where the best place for us to, you know, set up in some place where we'd be able to, you know, just You're kind stay. of breaking up there, by the way. Hmm? Uh, you, you kind of broke up there. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> you know, some place where we could set up and stay and stay... Um, you know, out of the limelight. 
Um, once, once we get you to clear through customs, and he gestures where they came through the gate, uh, you can head uh, to the span, which is uh, where the majority of the sentients live on the planet. Uh, there is the, uh, my part of town is where the subterranean Letnev normally reside. If uh, you need, and he totally looks at your Hylar member, that he, he mentions that the uh, most of the aquatic Hylar that live here are in submerged sections of the city near the middle of the span. I can gladly have one of my subordinates give you uh, an escort or directions, depending which is easier for you, to the uh, transient uh, populations visiting centers if you look if you need to find housing there. And by transient, he just means, you know, folks coming and going. <laughs> that would be so wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, he kind of sheepishly looks back at you guys and says, so um, one thing I, I do need to establish is that uh, we are a very peaceful colony after hundreds of years of war. The three predominant groups of our planet have found a way to live in peace. I would hope that agents of the Claris would respect that. And he gives almost a coy, sheepish look. You know, like, you know what I'm saying. Don't stir shit, you know. And uh, if I could please have your individual calm frequencies in case I need to speak with any of you. And by the way, you could totally give me your individual numbers or just a group number. You know, for the group Facebook chat. Um, yeah, I don't know. Thankfully, we look. our uh, perfectly friendly pilot here has uh, wooed the Letnev's, you know, prickly exterior. Even even some of his guys are like making looks like wow, uh, he's usually not so personable. As Percy may have have a gentleman caller coming. That's what the dice say. <laughs> I'm trying to look. I don't think I have a calm. There's a meeting in the Percy room. I don't, isn't wouldn't the comb be just a standard equipment? Um, you guys, some of you guys have combis, I believe. Oh, yeah, I don't. I, I have my savant, I have my savant and familiar, but I don't have a comb. Oh, so that okay? I don't think. Uh, let's see. I've got a combi. So I'm not giving one because I don't got one. Yeah, I guess I don't have one either, so... I'll give them mine. Okay, so they will totally scan you and give you a warning chirp to let you know that you've exchanged contact information with them. And uh, if you have any any issues, please contact me directly. Alright. And uh, while you're here on Kalira's business... Uh, are you going to be uh, reaching in to speak with the directors? And you uh, recall from we, your, your data information that the directors are the ones that uh, the three basically rulers of the city? We may. <laughs> may. And, and, and again, if I can ask to please be updated on any information that you believe would land under the purview of security of the span. Oh, of course. Absolutely. I would, uh, I, would, I would hate to be contacted after the fact. And he gives you this kind of stern look, like, you know, bad daddy look. Uh, 
And then he proceeds to uh, motion to his one of his guys, who totally comes over there with his uh, savant, and basically he he'll walk you to the basically apartments you can get, or he can give you the directions. Your choice. And as and I will warn you, as he pulls up the directions, they seem very complicated. Hmm. And especially since the directions ask, are you an air breather or a water breather? <laughs> I just uh, ruffle my feathers. That might be a little obvious. <laughs> they, they don't need to know that I can breathe air. <laughs> but do you want to get a water breathing section of the area for your friends? That's what they, the question is for. When we give you directions, are you are you can you go through air breathing areas, or do we have to send you directions specifically through water breathing areas? Well, he's in a tank, so yeah, he's in a walking yeah. fish tank. Yeah, I can go anywhere, but also outside the tank, I can breathe air. You guys know that they don't need to know that. <laughs> no torturing the fish person by holding him out of the water and torturing him. Yeah. So, no, you can give me any directions, but I could also, I mean, how separated will I be from the team if I go to the water? Well, if you go to the water breathing area, you'd be the only one there. Do you want to get separated or trust in your suit? Split the party. Split the party. (laughs) (laughs) I knew somebody was getting where I was going with that. I mean, you totally can go with them since your suit allows you to be an air breather, quote unquote, even though your species is traditionally not. So uh, do you want the security officer to go with you and guide you through or are you wanting to just take the directions and go? I think having the security person come with us would be a good idea. Probably. It'll make us appear trustworthy. I hope you're not saying that out loud. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, the security team makes faces at you like, you said that out loud, you know, right? Okay, so uh, you guys do the private gestures between each other that you'll take the uh, security officer. And uh, Officer Zarin basically nods at him and says, uh, report back once they have been uh, deposited. And deposited. The, the, the young female <laughs> Letnev that totally would have been right up Evan's alley if he had shown up, is totally interested in all of you guys, and she totally starts asking questions about the Calaris. And once she's out of earshot of her commander, she wants to know all about you guys and your exploits off-world. Off she's never been off-world. And yes. Oh, I'll take seen, this one in Charmer. If you've seen Fifth nah. Element, think of the stewardess that's talking to uh, Corbin Dallas. About have you seen Ruby Rod? I'm the favorite, and she just keeps asking incessant questions. Yeah, I'll I'll take the hit for the team on that one. <laughs> yeah, you and, do that. And she yeah. totally jokes that she has a, an uncle who's a high roll. You know, he he's been you know friends with the family since since three generations ago. You know, the friend family has been one big happy family it is so great to see Hyrule from from other planets coming down and it's going to be great to have you meet some of your long lost cousins yes great (laughs) so uh, are you going to try to charm her with small talk as you guys are walking along I am going to do more than try and charm her with small talk and see if we can't get a semi-permanent guide to the planet. Oh, wow. Way to use the young and naive. I love it. Okay. Recruiter, man. uh, (laughs) For this charm, am I needing to add any dice? Um, Just the two blue if she's mammalian. She is mammalian. She has memory glands. (laughs) Ooh, baby. Overrated. 
she is totally wow. asking if you have any modern entertainment music because her and her friends meet like every other weekend <laughs> and listen to the new music of the galaxy. You don't know how bad it is to be in a culturally starved vacuum where three cultures have been living together for hundreds of years and you don't really get anything new. Now we're back to being part of the galaxy. Go ahead. What um, what is music or entertainment actually transmitted on? Uh, your savant would have it if you have one. <laughs> Think of your savant as a floating uh, iPhone. You mean the familiar? Yeah, the familiar. Sorry. Savant's the like the skill one. Tablet or pad or yeah. device communication control device. Yes. Okay. Um, I actually asked the clan what type of things would be good to bring here. I'm assuming since entertainment is lightweight and usually very um, portable, that was one of the things that I actually have a bunch of. Okay. So um, I will answer... Well, you know, I could, I, I, I have some, but, you know, my clan was hoping that we'd be able to uh, set up an exchange here for that. And she kind of gives you this, this quizzical look like she doesn't quite get your drift of what you're being coy about. But uh, mm -hmm. give me your charm roll. And I do have your two blue in there. Too square for a man. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, you take a, a point of stress as you're stressing this cultural exchange moment because you're totally like, she doesn't get what I'm going with. And I'm trying to go Ooh. to a place and she ain't going there with me. But she is fascinated by you. Her Letnev violet eyes are just sparkling. She takes in every little furry whisker of your complexion. As, as at one point, uh, she actually actually asks if she could touch your ear. Wow! She, oh, of 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 course you can. As she totally runs a finger gently over your fuzzy ear, and she just does. And that I will purr for her. Oh my god! god. Oh my god! <laughs> and it is the most awkward moment when the camera pans out and the rest of you are watching this in the lift, <laughs> and you're just like, "Why did we have to be here?" Yeah. You guys want like, your own lift? Yeah, I like it. I'm just like looking at my feathers are just kind of ruffled. I'm like, what the hell? So, so I will be a little bit more explicit here. And, and you say, you? well, you have a lot of friends, right? Oh, 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 I have many friends. Uh, fortunately, thanks to the school system we have here, it's also set up as, as both gender, age, as well as by, by skill set. The, the Hyrulean education system has been modified for all three races on our planet to enjoy an equal and educating experience to grow with as many diverse friends from as many diverse family units as possible. Right. Yeah, and and how big is this group of yours that gets together that would want to see this new entertainment? And she totally puts a finger up to her, her lips and taps. And she says, normally our, our, our little cultural exchange, our cultural meetings usually have between 40 and uh, 60 people showing up to most of them. Oh, and then they would also have friends who probably would like new cultural entertainment, right? Of course, of course. Yes, we, 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 we would take anything that you bring from the galaxy of, as a oh, billions and billions of other planets we we have spent hundreds of years of just surviving with what we had on the ships as our our great 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 grandparents used to say of if we didn't bring it to this planet we don't need it but unfortunately we we the younger generation understand that this is a beautiful moment where we're being reintroduced into the galaxy's whole Ooh. Well, you know that the entertainment is is created by professionals who spend all of their life training to be able to act and sing and 
do all of these things, don't you? Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. We 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 appreciate anything that uh, you can you can bring and share with our people. Well, you see, the problem is, is if I were, if if, if they were to just give it to me, no, and no. then I were to just give it to you, they wouldn't be able to have the time to create all of these things because they would need to do something else for a job. And, and she just kind of looks at you. She realizes that you're 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 now negotiating, not charming. As she's like, well, what do you, what do you think would be a fair exchange? I mean, don't go. The people of the span aren't aren't expecting handouts from the galaxy. We produce enough and will be more than willing to contribute to the galaxy as a whole. What do you think something like this would run? And she gives that look of, let's start negotiating, Buster. Okay, I can do a negotiation. <laughs> okay. As uh, you're totally like, yeah, we'll 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 negotiate this. <laughs> she, she was she was falling for your charm, and now you're asking for money and stuff. Okay, you got my two blue. I got your two blue. Thankfully, I had to change very little. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! wow. So, uh, take another point of strain as you're getting exhausted with this hero worship that she's giving you. So, uh, she, what is Damn. it you're wanting? I mean, you've been hinting at you want something, but you haven't mentioned a price. Before we talk about that triumph, uh, she'll agree to whatever that price is. So, what is that price? Okay, so... Um... And this is why the mothers say, Outlander, go home. Yeah. Uh -huh. A Hakan goal would be the ability to, what, have, ex well, she wouldn't be able to give us exclusive rights, but. I'm like, what she, would... she is a security officer. She doesn't have a lot of clout. You know, she basically think of her as a space station cop. Right. How far are you going to twist her? She's a large <laughs> wall cop. <laughs> well, but she is part of this organization. Yeah, yeah. So how much clout does she have in the organization? Think of her as any security officer, you know. No, 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 no. In, in, in this fandom. With, with her friends group? It's yeah. just a group of free-spirited uh, post-teenage kids that uh, have little rave parties that pop up. Oh, okay. So it's not organized. It's not organized. Nope. It's, it's whoever feels they have something new to share. And she starts totally fangirling on all of you guys that uh, anything you have to contribute, movies, videos, the, the the youth of the span will devour them all individually or as a collective group. She's a beatback, man. <laughs> okay, so this is my cultural heritage. I should know what I should be able to get out of her. I mean, are you extorting favor? Are you extorting money? I mean, what do you want? What are you wanting to profit? You're going to profit. So oh, what favor. Are you, what are you definitely, wanting? definitely favor. Okay, so with your four successes, you can get a favor out of her. What is the favor you're looking for? Um, she will be she she will tell us any and all security stuff related to us or anything weird. Okay, define anything weird. Well, I was gonna say. <laughs> Anything Any, out of sorts? That, what? Anything out of sorts? Yeah. She, she'll agree to that uh, in exchange for whatever music you have. Though uh, she will tell you that there may be certain things that uh, if the council has declared it uh, forbidden knowledge, she won't be able to share that with you. Oh, no, no, of course not. I wouldn't want her to send anything that would um, that would get her written up. Okay, now the question is, what do you want for that triumph? Uh, 
Are you wanting to make her a permanent friend? And I just realized the suggestion button's been turned off on this chat. Let's turn that yeah, back on. Yeah, I haven't on. seen it's anything. Fun. <clears throat> oh, we'll use the show suggestion. So you think button. that she really isn't like anyone who's anyone, right? Yeah, she's just one of the security officers. Okay. So, for the Triumph, could she um, know and have good relations with somebody that would be uh, really beneficial for us to know? Like, um, you know, entertainment conglomerate or... Okay, yeah, she can totally introduce you to the guy that uh, runs the raves. And he's kind of like uh, the, the skeezy producer as she describes this guy and what he does. He's totally a Letnev that wears, you know, black suits. He's got his hair pitch black, and he's the one who runs the uh, the gatherings. And kind of kind of packages up the inter- entertainment information after the raves to disseminate to people, i.e. sell. Bootleg copies. So he's setting up an entertainment system. Uh, bar or something on the planet? What the hell? Uh, no, I'm setting up our streetwise connections. Uh huh. <laughs> Call it what you will. You totally think he's doing some side business with this little chica. And oh. uh, she totally passes you the contact information. Now, what is her actual presence? Uh, her presence is three. She's a little cutie. Uh, okay. A little under what I normally go for, but not bad. <laughs> wow. wow. Not a snob or nothing. <laughs> Her skin's so smooth. That's just weird. Oh, yeah, but I like all types. <sighs> just wait till uh, Officer Darren comes a-calling. Uh, what part of all types did you not understand? Double yikes. <laughs> right. And this is how the group is really getting introduced to you. <laughs> In this very awkward elevator moment on the span. So, of course, Listen, you know... The, there's only one line that you need to know in order to understand Percy. Is it a mammalian? <laughs> it's like that Twitter channel. Did you guys see the Shatner alimony attorney video? Uh, uh, I'll have no. to share it with the group, but apparently th- these cosplayers made a video saying, Have you fathered a child with Captain Kirk? And it goes, <laughs> and it goes on to all these women with kids. It's like, He needs to pay now and forever. <sighs> thanks to his aid from the Federation. And basically, it's uh, the whole let's sue him for getting you knocked up commercial. Uh, it's really funny. So uh, we get a little screen swipe as the doors open, and she's taking you up to a, a series of apartments that that locals can visit and rent by the hour or the day or the week. And uh, she shows you that this is the visitor section of the span, and it literally looks like an industrial, somebody decommissioned ships to build this station area. And it goes all the way down to some, like, aquatic Jeffrey tubes type of deal for, uh, obviously, some of our smaller water-breathing friends here. As well as they've got people movers that seem to be made of heat-resistant tiles for our fiery lava friends from the other half of the planet. So they can just stand and be carted on tiles that won't melt. Because, you know, sometimes it sucks when your feet are made of fire. (laughs) And uh, as uh, you guys are walking through and she's giving you the quick rundown of here's the food place, here's the best delivery food place, here's if you want to get food from, you know, all the aquaponic places, here is where you can contact on these, and she's pointing out these cute little pedestals, that uh, if you need to contact these, the planet-wide net, 
you would merely access it through these panels. Uh, normally, they are free to use for citizens. There is going to be some limitations since you don't have citizen credentials. So you may realize that some information may not be accessible to you without using credentials. And she totally what? points out a uh, dog tag like little card that you would pull out of your neck and click into the console to, to get full access. And she totally demonstrates to you this little car and puts it back under her, her blouse and back into its hiding hole. And, uh, and she points out that uh, ever since the span has opened itself up to the galaxy at large, we've received a large number of, of transient guests that have come to do business, to discover the cultural changes that our three cultures have become as a whole, as well as uh, interesting and unknown. And she kind of squirms her face as she looks at something across town for a, for a quick brief second, which one of you with the best perception, give me a Ayo. perception check. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Don't roll yet, though, because you're going to be rolling against Percy's two blue for mammals. <laughs> yeah, I'm just two yellow. I mean, I have a question, too. And a blue. Is, is she it? a mammal? <laughs> she is, she is indeed still a mammal. <laughs> that doesn't get me anything. For some reason, know. she's wanting to buy a cat now. <laughs> she, is she wants to become a, a cat lady. Okay, I have your pool set. Wow. As uh, you totally try to see what she's looking at when she made the, the funky face, but she just like <clears throat> shook her head away, like whatever it was, whatever. And what would you like for those two advantages? As you totally glance two seconds too late to see what she was looking at. Mm, can I... Uh... Go unnoticed while I slip out my Quinta sensor? Ooh, you can. Yeah. Oh, my. That's right. I'm an investigator. I come stocked with lots of personal gear. <laughs> it's almost like it's your job. It's almost like I did the math on the thing, and it's actually better to just take the lump sum of cash than the starting gear, because you can buy all the starting gear plus more. <laughs> you it's kind of that. ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you do as you whip it out unnoticed? Whoa, I mean, as... hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, put that away. Wow. <laughs> what a way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh i mean so i saw the direction she was looking i'm gonna go ahead and scan to see if there's anything unusual that way Ooh. i mean we, we we have an idea that there might be some l1z1x agents and you know gonna scan for maybe some cybernetic uh signatures oh my Okay, go ahead and give me, as you just nonchalantly look back in that direction, wave some dials, give me your computer's <coughs> check. Computer's check? Computers. As I totally was going to say, you still have four story points. Do you want to bump one back to me? <laughs> nope. As um, you do your computer's check. And immediately you're picking out a very diverse, on your scanner, the, the, the very diverse life forms. Uh, and uh, interesting you asked for cybernetics. Interesting indeed. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, with, with, your, with your one success, and what would you like for your advantage? <laughs> See how I skipped over that. I think I'd like to know oh, what the success is going to get me before I think about what the advantage is going to do, okay. if that's all right. So uh, off in the distance, you know, we're talking like a good, you know, quarter mile off in the distance where there's people doing some some weird ritual shit in the streets. That you're just quite like, well, I don't know what they're doing, but it's weird. It's got lots of banners and streamers and there's incense burning and you're just like, whatever's going on over there ain't none of the business. But let's tweak yep. the dials and immediately you get the little UHF 
wobble across your little sensor screen of radio signals and you zero in on it. And uh, for your one success, you definitely are picking up, especially since you mentioned it, some L1Z1X frequencies like is that's utilized for their <laughs> mind net <laughs> as well as uh, communication, oh, you know, general communications. Uh, do I have an idea? I, I doubt you're going to give me exactly where it is, but do I have an idea of how far away it is? Uh, it's it's about a good uh, quarter mile ish in a general area that's about forty five degrees, on, you know, centered on where you're pointing your device when you did the scan. So it's basically in the giant middle of a giant plaza full of people. Uh, all right. So I'd guess that she was probably looking at the plaza full of people because it's a little strange, but I very much doubt she saw the L one Z one eight. X agent. Yeah, you definitely you did not see anything that would would should have made her make the face. I mean, maybe whatever the festivals going on caught your attention, you know, caught her attention. Yeah. Because remember, she they are culturally starved. I mean, you, you had three yeah. species trapped on this planet for a hundred years. If it's not one of the three main species, they're probably surprised and astonished by it. And there seems to be like a little parade with cool streamers and things going on in the general background that you you quite don't don't get either. Maybe, maybe it's because culturally speaking, you've not seen this celebration before. Yeah. Also, I'm um, a sar. It's not like we have many cultural celebrations. You survived. That is your culture. We, yeah, we survived. That's about it. We have survived many holocausts. That is our culture. You know what? Right. That's damn respectful on its own. Yep. Right. Uh, I'll use that advantage to maybe maybe give a nod to to uh, the guys not talking to the Letnev. <laughs> uh, just like a heads up, like, hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Do you guys have a secret uh, signal for L1X1? <laughs> I I doubt we have a secret signal. I think it's more of a like, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing that we came to this planet for specifically, <laughs> you know, the thing that that's an affirmative to the thing and the thing. Mm. Interesting. Of course, your avian buddy's probably just like, but gene sorcerers, the real conspiracy boys. <laughs> oh, they're there. They're out there. They are. Do, 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 do. <laughs> they're not right here. <laughs> the one C1X are right here. You sure? Pretty sure. As he points to the scanner, and there's a wave that you get like, I don't know what that means. I'm not so uh, she basically guides you guys the rest of the way to the, the place where you can totally go to the little automated kiosk where you would check in and get a, get a room card. And uh, how many rooms are you wanting to get? And for how long? And for uh, what level of companionship is required? <laughs> uh, oh, well. Well, I think we sh I think we should all get rooms of our own. I think Per should definitely have a room of his own. <laughs> right. Whatever's gonna happen in that room, we don't want to be part of. Uh, I'm definitely not rooming with and, the cat. And if it is possible, that room should have extra maid service. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's just perfectly nasty. What? Well, right. <laughs> Needs extra room service because of the shedding. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The shedding. Is that where we were going? Okay. So if <laughs> anyone wants a room, it's 20 credits a day. You know. What? Hey, space is tight when there's only one city in this whole planet. We don't get, like, special envoy-like discount. As Officer Zarin mentioned, the Clarice Council has no authority here. <laughs> and it's not like you went to the Magisters first to uh, check in and say why you were here. 
to get some kind of special dick discompensation. Words. Words are hard when you're thirsty. <laughs> um. I mean, I'm willing to share a room with most of uh, us. I just, I just <laughs> sit now. We can in, share. Now if there's a price, it's like, oh, <laughs> I mean, no, I'm still good. No, no, you. I'm not sharing. I said most of us. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just gonna sit in my tank most of the time. So, yeah. Well, he's he's totally yeah, gonna be like night. the. The fish sidekick of Mastermind and just park his robot suit <laughs> on, the, on the curb and just wave. Yeah. It's how much a night? 20 credits. That's it. That's nothing. <laughs> That's all I got. I have 30. Yeah. You guys could, you know, chip in together you and could, have two great yeah. nights at a hotel. I mean, you can always sleep on the ship. That's an option. She was told to take you guys to a, you know, nice hotel. So she's taking you to the nice hotel. And that's not even the expensive one. This is just the spacer hotel. Next thing you know, you're going to say you want a continental breakfast. So I've got almost 300 credits. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Don't Someone make sure to invest in their extra dividends. It's all that family yeah. business. Yeah, this Galeria gig hasn't paid much yet. So, how, how much cheaper are the rooms in the in the uh, hydro section again? Uh, they're <laughs> underwater, and uh, they're about the same price. Yeah, slight problem with the breathing, though. As your friends want I mean, to not breathing for me. masks. I'm just. <laughs> All right, well, I I mean, I got a night's worth. So you totally get one night's worth of credits? As you're totally hoping we get some, some loose cash you here. sure you don't want to split it? Uh, I mean, sure, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, it's not like you guys didn't share dorm rooms back at the headquarters. It was two agents <laughs> per room there, so. <laughs> okay. Hey, if anybody if anybody needs any, no problem. Aww. How long do we want to set this up for? Well, well, go a night to start. I mean, yeah. Do we get a discount if we rent by the week? Uh, if you rent by the week, <laughs> you actually get one day free. Hmm. It's the rent six days, stay one free special. Suck that Wyndham <laughs> Hotel. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a ganga, but I still can't do that, so Yeah, we'll start with one. Okay, so you, you basically pay for one and uh, do you designate like you guys want to be like across the hall, side by side? They do have adjo adjoining rooms if you'd like to sign up for that as an option. Um, sure. Until I spend too much time at hotels. Let's do adjoining uh, rooms. Adjoining yeah. rooms, so it's one big block of rooms. That means yeah. you guys are totally going to be the party guys. Woo, woo. Yeah. I... So it's me and the fish guy, and this is the, yeah. the two of you then, or? Yeah. <laughs> The cat and dog. <laughs> Cats and dogs living in sin. So we got a cat, dog, That's and a nice. bird. Great. And a fish. So we're <laughs> a bunch got of... the whole family pet system. <laughs> yeah. Whole household pet system. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Getting that peachy. Maybe we should maybe we should rename our team. <laughs> House pets, right? <laughs> Wait, what did we name our team? I, I was still waiting for that answer. I don't think we actually came ah. up with one. Yeah, we just have a funky 
uh, ship name. So. Yeah, I saw the the ship name. <laughs> Don't worry, we're, you can we're, always. We're the monkey wrench. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> As slowly the iOS on the ship ship starts getting changed, so the name responds to something different. <laughs> So did you get her digits, dude? She hasn't left yet. She will totally, you know, help you guys, you know, push any buttons on the kiosk to get your room keys, and she will totally provide you her direct combat contact information. Uh -huh. Oh, no, 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 no. The three of them are going to go into one room for a while, and the two of us are going to go in another. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Wow. You got you got the suck on the doorknob. <laughs> he needs her help pushing his digits. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. And uh, to which when the romantic fade to black happens there in uh, Percy's room, do me a favor and give me a resilience check. Uh -oh. I just want to know who finishes first. Oh, I thought I, I thought she was a letdown. She's real rough in bed. <laughs> no, she might be. She's her kind folks, of warrior like. Her you folks know. have been okay. Chilled. Normally, this is a general skill, but in this particular case, can it count as social? No. <laughs> this is endurance and stuff, man. This is this is you know dealing with a planet and gravity. You can totally blame it on you're not using this planet's gravity. Needless Ooh. to say, um, wow, she was a, a lot of little gal, and uh, you must have been suffering space fatigue. But a good time was had by both. Only you could have done better. Either <laughs> well, no, either it was failure to fire or uh, Wait, premature three fire. Purple? That was her resilience. I was just wanting to know who finished first. Oh, okay. This is her first time with an off-worlder with fur. I mean, she she knows your species, but this is her first time getting to spend some quality time. Like I said, like I said actually, she's just on SSRIs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. With a failure, I think it might have been a failure to fire. I mean, no, you know. no. It, <laughs> she she just wasn't that impressed. As she pats pats you on the thigh and says, "That's okay. Maybe next yeah. time." <laughs> she, she it's probably because probably because I had too much on my mind. Yeah, yeah, because because there, there's there's you know, just work has been work. Yeah. Should have tried the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we're inventing some seriously weird pseudo stuff. <laughs> Should have brought the bird jazz. Chirp, 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 chirp. So you giving us more, more deets on what you were finding there? As the group's getting all There's casual in the yeah. room waiting for what's going on. As uh, <laughs> one party member's busy making noise in the adjacent room. Yeah, I mean, I imagine we're all just standing around uh, talking about this. I mean, it's only like 35 seconds we got to burn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cats, they've evolved to be quick and efficient for survival purposes. Yep. Yeah, pretty that's much. the excuse he's going to use. <laughs> that's, yeah, pretty much. Get it done and move on. <laughs> it's this gravity. And, and sadly, the... The, on the station, you realize that there's only two channels on the communications network for entertainment. <laughs> one is the equivalent of you know Turner Classic one is, movies, and the one other is Fox, is Fox News, and the other is AMC. <laughs> oh, golden oldies or new stuff? <sighs> yeah. So Culture. what are you guys doing while you're killing time? Uh, talking about the uh, O1Z1X mine net activity that I detected not far away. Oh, less than a quarter mile. That's pretty damn close. Yeah. In the middle of a rather odd and out-of-place looking festival compared uh -huh. to the rest of this planet. 
Oh, uh, oh, that's right. Percy's busy, so he can't help you about the festival. Sorry. No, no. Uh. Okay. Of course, you can always read busy, huh? So uh, you can always order room service to the room before uh, he joins you guys. Um, we could order room service uh, and put it on Percy's tab. <laughs> right. <laughs> As uh, the clock, you know, clicks like an hour later, and the adjoining room opens up, and Percy comes walking in, all sure of himself and impressed with his conquests. I don't know why he's looking sure of himself. It's they stopped making noise and. 59 minutes ago. Yeah, but he had to lick himself clean after. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Every square inch. <laughs> wow. So you got your your uh officer friendly has well, has gone to go back to work. She totally gave you the call me. Hopefully after you get some jet lag sleep. Wow. <laughs> but a good time, like was. I said, he a good time was had like, by, that's by all. I mean, it's not like he could get worse. <laughs> Despair. Now all she's right. pregnant. Who knew you could pollinate? <laughs> oh my god, blue cats. Oh my god, <laughs> blue nocturnal <laughs> panther people cat. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, our avian friend would scream, Gene Sorcery Evidence! Right? So, so while you were busy, uh, we apparently detected some uh, L1s around, but we couldn't do anything about it. I mean, we could have. Yeah, well, numbers are always better. I mean, look at it. I mean, he's going to be useless for the next <laughs> day, <laughs> month. I don't know. <laughs> so, do we? So, the only problem is, is we don't know what this world's outlook on them are, right? Um, what the L one Z one X? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much they are unaware for the most part. I mean, a lot of you guys, you you, you guys are an unknown to them. Like, you know, the certain uh, simian folks, they really have not made a big presence yet. Your feline friends have, of all species that have visited so far, were like one of the first and most prolific, mainly because they discovered the missing planet, as well as they are traders extraordinaire. So they are right. all about ingratiating themselves with a new market because that way they can corner the market. Right. So the but, L1 uh, Z1X pretty much is like an unknown to their culture. Okay. So as far as we know, they don't have not made contact and been like lied to and stuff about them or anything. Yeah, they, they pretty much have very minimal cultural contact. So if anybody okay. says, hey, those guys are assholes, they'll probably look at the party and say, are you sure? Or are you just that kind of alien? Yeah. Def you definitely just... have the feeling as Claris agents that if you're wanting to immediately say, hey, evil cyborgs, put them in jail or shoot them. They'll be like, hey, whoa now. Uh, we, we need evidence. We need proof. Especially on this planet where you realize three warring cultures made peace with each other. They might be more quick to the talk than the shoot. <laughs> so just a refresher exactly what we're looking at or doing while we're here. Uh, you were supposed yeah. to be making contact with a Clarice uh, agent. Cat's paw, right? Yep. And uh, okay. basically, that's what I thought. Find him and find out what he was telling you to come see before he went silent communication wise. Okay. 
that's like the only note I had, and I couldn't remember to what ex- where that played into. So I'm like, yeah, okay. So that's what I thought. So cat's paw. Yep. You're a step ahead of me. I had no idea what our mission was. <laughs> We're looking for cat's paw. Now you're all caught up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so she might have been helpful to direct us, maybe, if she knew. But um, if we had what was Cat's Paw? What, what race was Cat's Paw? Uh, you were not giving that information. Okay. Some of you probably, Percy, are making assumptions that may or may not be correct. <laughs> yeah, well, there is that guess, but. Were we told any way to actually find it? Um, you were basically given some very vague information that uh, if you were to go investigating around town, you may come across the very vague contact information that you were provided. You were given basically cat's paws, you know, call sign, counter signs. And you're assuming a sleeper agent would somehow work them into, like, say, graffiti or a business name. Something that you guys would definitely notice, but, like, non-agents would not notice. Almost like you might have to hit the field and investigate. Right. But no specific district areas or potential uh, hangout or nothing. You're told in the span, so you are in the right neighborhood. Okay. Granted, this neighborhood is like, you know, 200 blocks with multiple levels up and down and some in the water. Uh, I'd say we go out to some cultural area, food place or something, and see what we see as we meander. Meander. Probably remember Teletubbies, but do you remember? Unless somebody has a better idea. Are you guys planning on going like as a group or separating and spreading out and covering more ground? What is the plan? <laughs> well, Split the uh, party. Split the party. Yeah, with uh, with L1 on the planet, I would say we might want to stay together. Yes, but. Um, it, how many of us are equipped to to um, investigate the um, water area, underwater zones, neighborhoods? Uh, not me. <laughs> I'm gonna say I think you know that answer. <laughs> None of you thought to buy a wetsuit and scuba gear. I'm not a duck. Sorry. <laughs> so we might have to split up at one point, but we can start out together, I guess. Based on the name, probably not water areas, but could be wrong. Does the spacesuit double as a scuba? Uh, it would do- double and let you survive underwater. So I have a full spacesuit. Well, yeah, same here, but I say we well, start I mean, on dry you're land. Well, I mean, continually walking around with the water on the inside. I could walk around with the air on the inside. Yeah. Well, when the time comes for, but yeah, there's plenty of surface areas to investigate first because I know all of you are biased that way. <laughs> wow. All you air breathers. Oh, wait, you're an air breather, too. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's not my fault. I got it from my mom. <laughs> I got it from my mom on her father's side. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I say we go look out, look, go check out a food court or something like that, or I don't know. I mean, they obviously, have such a thing. as you all got takeout, you realize that Cat's Paw is not in the hotel room. 
<laughs> is there is there like a business directory or something we can do like a quick data search to see whether or not we can just find them from as you were saying the business name or location or something that we could just wipe that off real quick yeah there's totally exactly that that's part of the planet wide net you know there's that's totally a thing Can one of you people that do well with computers do that? One of you people. One of you people. <laughs> you what people. Do you can, what do you consider doing well with computers? Three or four dice, usually. Maybe, or maybe one, a yellow or two. In it. Um, I got well, the yellow and three greens. Generally, if you don't know that you're good with computers, I'd say a yellow and three greens pretty good. Yeah, two green. Oh. Actually, hang I, on. I, I think green. I am good with. I would think so. You're kind of a brainiac type. Yeah, and I also think if I remember, um, do, do, do. no, I, maybe not. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good with computers. Sure, I will. So I'm just gonna search for cat spa. Do some quick uh, algorithm magic. Yeah. Looking for cat's paw and, reference. And I will give you a blue since you, you have a clue of what you're looking for. Okay. Thank it's going to be a uh, hard roll with some black dice thrown in there. Do you have anything to take those black dice out? Um, I think that's for lore, not for computers. Okay. And uh, I've got that uh, upgrade. But let me there. check. Thank you. I like how somebody dropped the uh, story point just in case. Well, they said hard. And yeah, no, I don't think I. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I forgot to look at. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm still getting used to this. That's my excuse. Um, yeah, my familiar, um, I had one blue with my familiar from my familiar for computers. Okay. I have added another blue for you. Thank you. And That's now, when it. you make this roll, we'll take a quick break for the restroom because GM has to go to the restroom. <laughs> awesome. That's a pretty well, good reason. That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling now. Nice. As spewing through, you know, a few minutes of working away, you do get a successful inquiry that pops up. But first, we're going to take a quick five minute break for the restroom because I really <laughs> got to go. Perfect. I wasn't kidding when I said I came straight from the outside to the inside and logged in. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. Smoke it if you got it. Smoke it a pancake. See, I was right, Joseph. You you were right. <laughs> That's all I had was that reference, like cat's paw. Like, okay. Listen, man, I was so burnt out during uh, last week or the last session because I had such a long day before it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't remember anything about our mission. Yeah, David. I remember Dave something about me that messenger. beyond that? I... <laughs> it's like, hey, do you know why we're here? I'm like, um. Uh, Thought we were looking for the other member of our party, but I thought that was Chris. Yeah, well, it was. We were looking for him. He was supposed, technically, supposed to be on the planet, but he was. I thought there was like something about illegal weapons from like some dead race we were looking for. Yeah, potentially, I, but yeah, I mean, I know there was. It's the like agent. a cat. Yeah, it's a. It's like a uh, uh, Lazax. Um, like repository or something is supposed to be on this planet. That's right. That's right. Um, 
And then there's also L1, Z1X uh, activity that's been seen. Which is why I scanned for cybernetics. All right. I'm going to run off for a minute. So what did you do to yourself there, Scott? Um, so the tendon tore a bit of bone off uh, of the main part of the bone on the ankle. Nice. That's what it sounds very fun. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then in addition to that, my foot was on a bad angle uh -huh. that they're fixing. Wow. So that way, hopefully, it'll heal back better. Right. So they got you on some good meds? <laughs> no. No? Oh, man, bummer. No. That's a bummer. They don't do that anymore. Well, it's harder to get real good stuff, but yeah. And the worst part about it is that once you get the cast, you, like, forget how to do, like, normal stuff. <laughs> like, get up. Right. And all of a sudden, it becomes difficult. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to remember, imagine. okay, how do I stand again? <laughs> yeah. No, they're um, definitely awkward. And I was just, like known people in the boots and stuff and I'm like man that looks like to be a pain <laughs> okay. here it goes all the way up to the knee um almost yeah just under the knee yeah How long? I'll find out Monday. They didn't set up the second appointment yet. Oh, bummer. I think this is probably the worst season to have a cast. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, warm to be wearing a cast. So, depending uh, actually... on... A couple of weeks from now will probably be worse. At least it's still dry. <laughs> right. Ooh, wearing a cast in mustiness. Yeah. Ooh. Of it's a fiber one, right? Not a not a plaster. Uh, plaster. Um, it's the strips that harden. Oh, okay, so yeah. Yeah, it's the plaster. Yes. Mm. So, uh, if you don't mind saying, how did it happen? I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure. 
Oh, but crap. I think when I was laying down, Molly jumped over me. Oh, big and dog. And clipped my foot. Yeah, that that could do it. Ow. I mean, I'm assuming Molly is a large-sized dog? Yes. Uh, I consider it a medium-sized dog, but I'm used to Danes. What ah. would you call a 75-pound dog? <laughs> that is in the large category. Um, that, that, yeah, that's large. Oh, okay, do you group dogs into three or five categories of size? Three for me. Okay, then they are large. I categorize dogs into five categories. I'm curious. Horse... Small horse. Uh. Yeah, horse, large, <laughs> normal, small, really small. Yeah, toy and yippee. Is I mean a Which great is, game I, there. I, there I, I think there's a perfect horse. size where my hand, where I don't have to bend over to pet them. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> on the other hand, they are not so large that if they jump on my shoulders, they're looking down at me. Ah, right. Most of the dogs that I've had were that big. Oh. When I was growing up, we had three St. Bernards, so... I Ouch tend to is. I tend towards the larger size for appreciation for me. I, I am definitely pro larger dog to smaller dog. Yeah. Saint Bernard's big old <laughs> fur balls yeah. slobbering everywhere. Oh Happy slobber monkeys. Girlfriend there. when I was a kid had a Saint Bernard. Good lord, that thing was a mess. For their food dish, we used oil pans. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah. would keep them in food for at least an hour. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like Great Danes, you went out with a tractor to pick up the <laughs> turds. Yes, yeah. You just start a compost fire. <laughs> burn the mound to ash and then hope you can move on. And if I get disconnected oh. because I have a cat trying to climb over the laptop. Why are you doing this to me, cat? Why are you playing with my emotions? Oh, you want to get on the keyboard for the other computer. <laughs> well, you think He thinks it's a work day, so he's trying to get on the actual laptop tray for the other computer to get in my way. He has hmm. been trained well. Luckily mine don't do that. Yeah, my guy's a little turd. As, as we've discussed with our work group, we totally think it's the cat thinks uh, you're talking to them when you're on the headphones. Uh, so they're uh, immediately, he is drawn to, get, to give you attention thinking you're giving him attention. Right. Well, aren't you always giving the cat attention? That's because your job. They, Oh, you're supposed to, except the, for when they say don't give me attention. The staff exactly. has one job, to be there and interpret when I need attention and when I do not need attention. <laughs> to which he calmly meows. Though it was funny, because this morning I was gaming, and then this evening I'm gaming, and he's come in the living room to bug me at <laughs> both times. This morning's game, he was yowling because I wasn't giving him attention. Now he's taking it out on the couch. And now he'll go after fish in the fish tank. I'll keep him busy. Yeah. Totally Racist. why I've got that big fish tank. Everyone's picking on the high roll. <laughs> right. Okay, so we all back back? I yeah. think so. I heard Joseph, so he was the last one. Yep.
Sorry, as I paused because the cat just hissed at something. I'm like, what the fuck is he hissing at? This was like angry hiss. It's just a cat. There was something. Well, he's not walking really there. across the fish tank, which tells me it's probably something water involved. So it is kind of worrisome because there is a gallon jug of fermenting booze on top of the fish tank. <laughs> oh! Got some uh, mead fermenting right now, so because it nice. is the perfect time for it. Very it's cool. A cool corner of the house, and the fish tank keeps it at 80 degrees, so it doesn't get any colder. Nice. So uh, you guys basically have opted to head out into town as a group. Well, we did a computer search that oh, we were oh, going to yes, get the yes, results the from. Computer search. Uh, yeah. Be successful with two advantage computer search. Yeah. Yes. We Googled it. You you <laughs> right. it on the Google machine. Because you can always trust what comes up on the Google machine. It's true. And uh, immediately, um, you've uh, come across. A mention of Cat's Paws Celebration. And you see a uh, very nice, proud-looking Heckin. So I'm assuming you totally poke over to uh, Percy. Yes. As immediately you see, like, the the local stream of uh, Cat's Paw celebration and uh, when you look at the rough translation of celebration as soon as percy looks he knows not as a celebration but apparently it is a celebration of cat's paw's life and uh, oh. cat's paw is apparently a nickname and the actual name given by the explanation of the lore masters is uh, going to be a Heckin who recently passed away, uh, and they're basically just celebrating his life and the passing of Sakara, a well-regarded member of the community. Apparently there was some kind of robbery gone wrong in one of the alleyways. That's not suspicious. Not suspicious at all. Uh, hmm. By the way, our Heckin, as you totally look at the uh, pictures and things, you know that uh, Sakara uh, is a member of the Shaded Cliffs trade family. What do I know of the Shaded Cliffs family? Uh, you know they are very shrewd businessmen, but they're not dicks. That's like literally in their family bio. Be shady, but not dicks. <laughs> you, you know that for the most part, the uh, Shaded uh, Cliffs trade family are fairly up and up. You know, they honor contracts. They don't undermine people. You know, you know that if he's a member of the family, that uh, he's he's pretty much a good guy. Uh, what is their opinion of Kellis? Uh, their opinion of Kellis is actually well regarded because as many heckins from what you know generally speaking i mean you could always do a history role or a lore role for more but generally the most of your people are a-okay with the kellis because you're basically causing peace across the galaxy which is actually good for real trade and business you know, there are okay. some douchebag weapons merchants out there, but right. that kind of type of thing is a flash in the pants once every couple generations. Well, it's not sustainable. Okay. If, if you want me to make a knowledge society, I will. Okay. Let me go ahead and put the difficulty in there as you ponder for a second uh, of what more you may know about them. Can I use my two... two... Advantage to um, assist him with that? Sure, to, I'll, I'll give you a blue dice that for that. And he's already getting another blue because of 12. He's, it's a cultural thing. It's a cat thing. Go ahead and roll when you're ready. 
Yeah, pretty much as spoken. You know, they're, they're a pretty legit family. They don't do any criminal shenanigans. They are, they're very honorable when it comes to work contracts. And uh, they basically will follow a contract to the T. You know, they will, even if it takes like a generation, they will follow through on what they promise for a contract. They're basically really good guys. Okay. And uh, from what you're seeing on the uh, funeral comments and things, he is uh, a very well-respected member of the community here. I mean, from what you're seeing for a funeral turnout, he is getting all the appropriate and proper uh, funeral turnout uh, celebrations. Because, of course, your people celebrate someone's life, not their death, when they pass. Okay. Are, are there going to be a lot... Of, does it look like there are going to be a lot of... Um, Hawkins there? Uh, yes. Uh, there, there definitely is going to be a... Uh, as many members of you know from just standard funeral rites for your people, as many people that are available on planet that are of his clan or close by favorable clans will totally be uh, at the wake. Oh, okay. Um, so culturally, do do I bring anything? <clears throat> uh, culturally, you would be bring gifts for any any left behind family members. Usually, it would be. Culturally, for a heckin', it would be like something merchantile that can be resold, so the family can, you know, make profit, so they're not hungry or left in the in a schlub. Um, does the article mention family? Uh, it does mention that there are a few members of his clan, uh, his trade family there. Okay. So you may, in fact, um, run in that case, them. in that case, we need to go by the ship, and I'll pick up one of my trade goods. To uh, go ahead, sorry. To bring to the service. Out of curiosity, does it mention if the members of the trade family there are local or did they fly in for this? Uh, they have been here for uh, the last few months cementing trade negotiations. Okay. Basically, the, the, the family is one of the first ones that found the planet, and they're setting up a trade you know, commune here for uh, getting business and tra shipping people and wares off-world. Because trust me, it, just like when you met the girl and she was really interested in outside culture, there are so many people here who would love to get a ticket off-world. Okay, thanks. And you totally have directions on where the wake is happening, by the way. When is it happening? Uh, it is actually happening right now. It will conclude, you know, from your heckin' traditions that it will conclude at, uh, as, as the tradition would say, at high moon of this night. So basically in like six, seven hours. You know okay. that uh, from your tradition that there'll be a wake where the, the body will be viewed and mourned, but more, more people than not will try to celebrate his life and usually try to say one pleasant story about the person. And then at high moon, when the moon is at its highest, the family members will come up and take the offerings and they will then leave and the body will be left solitary for the next day and then will be uh, set to, to, to its final resting place. Which you totally know with your modernized version of it, he'll be shot into the nearest star. Because no longer do you leave the bodies to wait on a sandy plain by the elements. Instead, you totally take him to space and give him his last voyage. So, are you guys going to the wake? And uh, by the way, clearly with the pictures and all, um, when you turned around and looked at the town and scanned it with the computer, by the way, you realized that festival going on was the, the, the celebration of life. 
And that may be why your Letnev tour guide looked at it kind of astonished because it's a pretty eventful thing if you've never seen one. You guys are cultured and shit, and you've seen celebrations on different planets <laughs> that it's just like, it's Mardi Gras, dude. And she's just like, oh, the colors of fabric. I've never seen those colors before. Because it sucks when you're stuck on a planet with, you know, no new things being made other than recycled. So the L1s were messing with the Festival of Life. Well, you detected some of their comm signals, basically. So that's a yes. I mean, our investigators are instantly suspicious that their signals are here at all. And uh, for for your little advantage on that, that comm check, by the way, I will throw out, there is some interesting background radiation that you're picking up in general on the planet. Not like it's coming from any one location. Just some interesting, like, feedback on this planet. Could totally hmm. be related to the weirdness of the planet, that it's, you know, tidal locked and all that weirdness. That one half is baked and the other half is cold. Who knows what that can do to a magnetic pole? But you did detect okay. some like anomaly type uh, stuff. I thought non-spinning planets didn't have magnetic poles. Well, there's something causing some weird energy feedback on the planet itself. Okay. And I totally pasted his name and clan in the chat. So if anyone wanted to write that. Oh. Down. I did copy and paste it. And uh, the fact that the, the news article says that he was uh, murdered in a uh, robbery gone wrong. Obviously, this yeah. explains why your security chief, the security chief was giving you guys the hard nose when you first got here. Obviously, all of these outsiders must be the reason. So, what are you guys doing? Well, yeah. how long do we have until that event? Uh, it's... Basically, it's happen it started happening a few hours ago when you were walking huh. out in the promenade, and it will continue for the next six hours or so. As... Uh... You know, as you guys are out investigating, a uh, you know, totally notice the delivery vehicle going by of Starflower Dewdrop Cakes, which our uh, heckin' friend clearly knows is, is one of the foods of mourning that they use. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, we'll definitely... Wait, you have to feed have people to... exotic shit. And there's nothing more yeah. exotic than Starflower Dewdrop Cakes. That's a mouthful. Mm. Okay, well, I say we go. See what we can find okay. out. We need, like I said, lead. we need to drop by the ship to bring something to bring to them, but then we need to go. Okay, okay. so you guys take a quick uh, screen swipe to the ship. You grab some things. What is it that you're grabbing? Just the general trade good that, I, that they gave me. Okay, so just some, some good stuff that you saved for a good good deal later on you're like this would be a worthy you know donation to the family because it's right. literally just meant to keep the family going while they lost a productive member of their family and you guys screen swipe to the heckin wake and you totally see there's this very almost mosque like setup for a temple where at the very front of the room where there's a long line of different species dropping off little things and you totally realize that uh, this this person is obviously well liked by the community and uh, when you get close you see that uh, the casket he's sitting on top of actually has like a a heckin handprint going up and down like you know pawing something and then a second one sideways as apparently this is like his personal logo his his you know i his as trader go his icon which is cat paws 
And uh, you guys, are you standing in procession with everyone else going in order? Or are you, like, being a jerk and cutting a head or anything like that? Totally up to you guys. We're standing in line. Yeah. Okay, you guys Impatiently. Are, uh, you guys are all respectful, and there's, you know, a couple different, you know, species, every couple people, you know, and you guys come to your turn where he's sitting there. There's some incense sticks burning, keeping the air fresh around him. As you clearly see, he's in funeral, traditional heckin' funeral garb. And uh, you place your donation down, and uh, you just see a, a, a younger Heckin that's very similar to his patterns. Obviously, he's got to be like a sibling or a cousin. And she kind of sniffles from the end of, you know, the little little pew there, where there's room for maybe one, maybe two other, you know, sentients. As as she just looks at him and has this beautiful shimmer silk scarf that she's she's crying into that's permanently ruining it. It will never be the same. It will have two stains mm -hmm. forever. Is the countersign appropriate to say now? Do you say it? Well, I mean, you know, if the, count, if the countersign the is, you know, I like eating meatballs, then no. <laughs> if the countersign is, um, you know, they're the... <laughs> You know, something witty, <laughs> something witty or, or, you know, the sky is, you know, an unusual shade of blue today. Then, yes, the call sign is there's nothing sweeter than the desert breeze in autumn. Huh. To which the counter That's sign right. would be. But yet in winter is when the sweetest honeydew drops are made. I mean, who are you going to say? Are you just going to say this randomly to people? Are you going to grab the microphone? Well, no, 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 no. Well, to the, to the <laughs> relative. To the that relative. Give... Are, are you yeah, going to sit would... down at the pew next to her? Are you just going to come up and say some well wishes and throw the countersign in her face? How are you, how you going to do this? I would start with well wishes first. Then yeah, go up. Drop it somehow. Because many people are coming up and making, you know, spiritual gestures like bowing and, and you know prayer hands and saying I'm sorry for your loss you know obviously it looks like her and probably an auntie is with her holding her and, and you guys can come up and say something if you'd like who's going to be the first one to talk I will oh coming straight from another heck and I like this so what do you say? Um, um it's it's times like these where you realize just how well liked and appreciated and how great a man he really is, was. And, and when you say that, she kind of looks up at you with big puss in boot style feline eyes as uh, <laughs> she totally takes your, your hand in her hand and pats it. She's, that, 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 that's very kind of you to say. I... I I, I'm sure I'm sure my brother would have appreciated knowing this in life, and I'm sure that you, your your every act and gesture expressed to him how appreciated he was. I I I just I just don't know why why it had to happen to him. And she totally looks up at you and has the big dilated cat eyes, as she just has tears rolling down that little line on the sides of her nose, like you know a cheetah has. Where the tears roll down perfectly symmetrically, and, and and her is now that you're close enough to see it's definitely her aunt because of her you know, you know, clothing and all. She she basically pats the child and she looks up at you and says, "Thank you, thank you for 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 the donation and thank you for coming to pay your respects. I I promise you that that we the the shaded cliffs will will always." 
honor and respect our friendship with you. And she kind of puts her hand on top of your hand that his sister is holding and that you guys have a moment where you totally feel like claws reflectively, tenderly popping out, you know, and just grazing each other is, is a sincere gesture. As you know, they, they totally like release the embrace to let you move on in line and let the next person come. Is there anything you say? So, well, before I move on, it's, you know, I say, well, our culture has so many different ways of, of handling this. You know, after all, the, the ancient saying is, and then I'll say the countersign. You should have gone with the pickup line route. <laughs> as as she she totally you know hears you say that and she her eyes kind of bolt open. The aunt doesn't respond at all, but uh, his sister definitely responds and she says, uh, uh, "My my my name is Rayla. I am my Sikra's sister." Uh, and she looks over and she's like, Auntie, uh, I need to, I need to get some fresh air. I must, I must get up for a moment. And the aunt totally looks at you and gives you that, that auntie nod. Like, will you escort my child outside? You know, will you respond with a, with a curt nod or maybe a of flappy course. shake of the doggy head? A, a solemn and curt nod. As she totally, the auntie puts, you know, her hand further into yours and then releases you both, like, you on the honor system. You best not mess with my niece or I'll cut you. <laughs> Auntie's wearing one of the cultural knives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, are you going to, to guide Rayla outside for some fresh air? Mm -hmm. As uh, she uh, goes outside with you, she's totally sniffling in her little hanky, and you know she 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 basically. Asks, I'll I'll hand I'll I'll hand her uh, one of my hankies, and she will will gladly take it as as she sniffles and sneezes and. Does a very petite little achoo cat sneeze, and she's like, "What, what, what can I help you with? I, I know the words you said. I, I'm not privy to, to everything, from my brother, but I, I, I know some of his secrets." And she just like looks at you like you know she's pleading with her eyes pleading for answers. We were too late. And how many of you are all out there, by the way? Um, I followed his lead, so I'd follow along. Okay. Not knowing the culture. I mean, she's she's not, you know, she doesn't seem to be bereft if multiple people are there. So I was just checking to see how many of y'all are there. Yeah, I don't know about the other two, but I would have followed along. Yeah, I'll be there. As, as she totally whips out a uh, stim stick and lights it up to smoke in all those great herbal good essences. Mmm, tobacco. Everybody likes it. As uh, she, she totally is smoking her catnip cigarette and she just, you know, <laughs> trembling hand as she, she just asks you, what, what, what can I help you with? Well, right now, you don't need to do anything with the appropriate... I just... This was the only way that... This was the easiest way we could introduce ourselves to you. So, after the ceremonies, we can get in touch. And uh, Here's my contact information. She, she totally takes your contact information and... She 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 kind of looks sheepishly down at the ground and uh, back at you, and says, "Are are are you the the, the beings that he was supposed to meet?" Indeed. And she gets like a little nervous. 
Yes, indeed. If if you can, um, and she kind of like looks really sheepishly and kind of looks at you all as a motley crew that you are, and you know, she just says, um, if if you can wait for the end of the ceremony. Uh, my brother left something in my keeping and told me that if anything was to happen to him, to share that with the people he was waiting for. Hmm. She seems like really nervous to say any more than that. And if somebody wants to try to help coax her on, they totally can. Yeah. Well, I look at her and just, I'm like, you know, how. If you don't mind, how did your dear brother pass? Uh, he was you know? he was robbed and and murdered. But I I think something was strange about the robbery and that they didn't take. And she totally starts to like pull out from under her sleeves a bracelet of some shiny stones, as she just says, "They didn't steal this bracelet from my brother. It was one of his prized possessions given to him by his father." But Surely a thief would have known star sapphires were too valuable to leave behind. And, and as your friend here can totally attest that they are very valuable jewelry of heck and design that could easily fetch money in any starboard. It's totally tacky turquoise, but it's worth money. <laughs> Indeed, quite an odd occurrence. Again, I'm very sorry for your loss. And and she sniffles into her hanky and, and thanks you again. And if if there's any way you can find justice for my brother, I know he would appreciate it. And and then I know for a fact that the Shaded Cliffs trade family will appreciate it as well. And she totally puts a hand on on your forearms to, to, to reinforce the, you know, we will appreciate if you get revenge. <laughs> revenge. All right. I guess we hang until the ceremony's done. Uh, is anyone going to try to con convince her with a uh, coerce or a charm or a deception to say maybe a um, I'll charm her. So quickly to jump at like that. The always charming Percy. Uh, already exchanged digits with her, so, you know, it's already okay. working the next time. Go ahead and give me your charm roll. She totally wants to say more, but she needs some coaxing. She wants to make sure you're actually them, even though you had the call sign, which was very securing. It's good to get a little... Ooh, Percy's spending those upgrades. Okay, I got that in there for you. And the two blue? Uh, in this case, I'm not going to give you the two blue. Okay. I'm jerk. Just the same species. As they jokingly say, you call your mama a mammal? As uh, she basically tells you in no uncertain terms that uh, with your charm roll, that uh, she kind of has a mini breakdown and, and clutches your forearms. And she <sighs> says... You must be the ones that he's working with since you know the words that I was told that they would speak. And I, I have to warn you that, that my, my brother came to harm when he was going to be meeting a group of Winu a while ago. And he was unsettled when he had an encounter with them, but he was going to follow them is what he told me is, is his last words. He, he said these Winu were up to something, and he had to tell, and she totally looks both ways, the Calaris. And she, like, totally nods at you when she says it, for you to, like, nod back that, yes, you are the Calaris. Yes. And uh, as you nod that, that um, she tells you that there is a offering 
that my brother was said to, if anything happened to him, to get into your possession. You'll notice at the end of the ceremony tonight, there will be a fine brass vial of spices that will be left behind. And that is the final message from the cat's paw. And she just starts, starts sniffling with her cold, wet nose. As, as she basically says, please stay to the end of the, the ceremony and collect that, as, as none of the family will touch that. As they, they have been informed that that was left purposely for Cat's Paw's allies. And and she totally does the anime turn away in tears with her big cat eyes and goes walking back into the, the wake. Um, I'll escort her back into the wake. She's not going alone. Okay, and uh, Auntie yeah, gives you a very, very appropriate nod and gesture as uh, you took an extra point of strain you know, with that charm roll and keeping up. As uh, you take her back to her seat and uh, the Auntie gives you the nod that you are dismissed of your services. As, uh, you know, basically you could find a place inside the wake to, w- to wait out the uh, few hours that it takes for the end of the ceremony. Is Basically six different languages are said for the ceremony for all those that are not Heckins, just in case. Is there anything you do as we screen swipe through those hours? Just looking for any unusual behaviors Ooh, that's an interesting one i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna look more into that background radiation on the planet see if there's any documentation of it oh okay so first i want a perception or vigilance check as you're checking the place out for unusual players play yep. play it y'all let me know when we're red die you're ready all right, and of course, I got my familiar. Oh, what's that going to give you? Or do you already have that in there? I already got it. Okay. Yep, got it loaded. All right. Okay. Boom. So uh, you notice uh, when she mentioned the Winu, you do see a kind of shady-looking Winu covered in robes and hoods. You've never seen a Winu covered in garments like this. You know, it's very concealing these robes might be considered. As uh, that totally leaves down a little token item. It's like some kind of electronics you can't quite make out. But uh, it's following the custom of everybody else, you know, putting down something of of sellable value. It's some kind of contraption. Right. Okay. As, you know, he's the only one you really notice that's suspicious, except for uh, two of the local uh, security forces are totally there, and one of the dudes totally leaves, like, you know, a nice box of those those great cakes that are traditional. You know, cause apparently, you know, he does not know the culture well enough, so he's trying his best. And uh, <laughs> another officer comes up behind he him. He looked up on Wikipedia and, and saw that there was something about these cakes. Something about these funeral cakes that totally is a thing, and they drop them off. But the right. Winu with those three successes kind of sticks in your craw. You you almost think that uh, there was like a hint of... <laughs> Lost you. Yeah. No, sorry. I was paused with Joseph's text on the, the Heckenpedia. <laughs> A oh. <laughs> hint of uh, cybernetics on the cheekbone that caught your attention. Uh, yeah. Green and silver kind of clash. Yeah. Uh, As, uh, yeah. you know, and the person, like, dro- dropped off the offering and then, like, bolted for the door, didn't say anything to the family, none of that. But not, like, suspiciously uh. bolt, just, you know, moved with expedience. No, no. But already enough odd looking, and yeah, so I locked that into memory. As you lock that into memory, we get this this mon- time lapse montage as the incense sticks are burning in fast forward mode, as many people are moving and coming and leaving, and finally the family members start to be like some of the last people to leave, and each one comes up oh, and takes one of the Jim. offerings. Yeah. 
different different cultures have this differently. Um, how much socializing is appropriate? Usually, you know, at this point, it would be just the the clan themselves that would have further further festivals, as opposed to like the hired performers. So they would have hired performers dancing and singing while they walk back home to to have the clans, you know, the, the family groups final goodbyes. So okay. it would be a very personable thing, but there would be performers that they hired following them. You know, yeah. merrymakers to try to make the day a little better. Yeah. So Joseph, you're you go duggery ish. Oh yeah. So. I will have side chatter and kind of point to the object and kind of mention what I saw and and point to the object that we might want to additionally acquire um, and covertly or or covertly. And slowly the camera's totally showing like different offerings disappearing as different people walk by. And then finally his sister reaches down and she picks up, you know, a, a bolt of some expensive cloth. And uh, she she pats the little brass tin that's there, almost almost as if she was patting her brother. She then comes over and puts a hand on his cheek and she kisses his forehead, with a little nose rub to put his hair back in place. And uh, her and her auntie walk out, and you guys, it, the place is almost empty. There's like staff still working there, but there is a single little fine brass vial of something left on the offering table that no one has seemed to touch. Right. But the Winu offering that that was picked that up the... by somebody. Okay. okay. But how quickly? Because I was like told I would tell Joseph's character like as soon as I saw that about that item Okay. To try to acquire it before it was potentially picked up. Oh, so you're going to try to snake it from the person who's going to pick it up? Yeah, well, before somebody decides that it's they a, want it's that item. It's appropriate to buy it from that person helping the family continue. That's why they were given them. I understand that, but I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Joseph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got a point so, there. Right. So, because I think it could be something nefarious. Yeah. So you're going to try to steal it before anyone picks it up? I mean, I'm certainly not going to try stealing it. That's a great fucking way to get kicked out of a funeral. <laughs> um, we as, said you were really as, good skullduggery. As many of these I mean, heckins are wearing... That doesn't mean that skullduggery is the answer to every problem. As many I have of these a heckins are wearing sensor. ceremonial blades. I have a quintessence that I can point towards it and see what I may about it. He's totally going to do the Uhura thing with science officer skills. Yeah. And if it, if it you know, trips my internal bullshit detector, uh, we can we can see about acquiring it. Okay, go ahead and give you me your handle computers. It. I'm just pointing out the issues. Computers roll as he points out the electronica, and you're just like, let's see what that is, and you hold your little thing and you twist your little dials. Yep. So I can roll. Yep, yep, you're all ready to go. Oh, a point of strain as you're sitting there at this funeral playing with your smartphone, a little electronica. As everybody's like, seriously, you're getting like the occasional dirty look because you're adjusting your dials onto it. And clearly, it is emitting some kind of radio signal. See, See, told you. Told you. Can I get any kind of information on that radio? Uh, Is it a radio signal where it's like a constant frequency and waveform going out at all times? Or is it like modulating, like it's sending out some kind of... With three successes, you're totally getting that uh, the item is picking up all the surrounding sound around it and transferring it in burst data. So like every minute it's sending a packet of data information of the recording. That it just recorded. So it's basically a uh, a bug. 
yeah. future yep. space yep. bug that uh, you do realize that it was, uh, you know, somebody worked hard to conceal its signal, but it isn't anything super rare or high tech or fancy. It's one of those kind of listening devices that anyone with a with a Radio Shack could build. Yeah. Space See, I didn't need no mechanic to figure that or little <laughs> device to figure that shit out. Yeah. But now that we've done that, it's a good idea to not just steal it. <laughs> well, well, if nobody sees, then nobody knows the better. <laughs> oh, yeah, because that's what we want him to be carrying around with us. A bug without us having known. Well, I figured it's what it was. <laughs> My Someone's intuition. suspicious by bird nature. Yeah. Right? You know your feathers get ruffled when you're suspicious. Exactly. So we're all aware our plan is to get the vial of spices at the end, right? Yep. Right, which is intended for us to take. Yeah, it's intended for us. So I'm going to I'm going to ask Percy through digital communications. What is there any way we can get our hands on any of the things that the family is going to take you know buying it asking for it nicely <laughs> holding them up at gunpoint later words yeah <laughs> <laughs> to which Percy will so, tell you that it is traditional that the family members sell these items at a moment of need usually they try to sell them off as early as possible because they are connected with the, the passing of a clan mate so it's one of those of they want to hawk these quick. Okay. Which is Go buy that. On the and, and, and what about stuff left behind? Uh, traditionally, nothing is left behind. Even uh, e even if one item is left over, a family member will circle back and get another one. It's odd that one container is still sitting there after the last family member picked up everything. Who seems Who seems to be in charge? Like of, of the, the clan's room? form funeral, or no, 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 the, of the room, the funeral parlor where it's at. Yes, uh, there seems to be a, a heckin' you know gal. She's got the ceremonial, you know, basically you know funeral director outfit on. You know, it's kind of like a high priestess thing meets meets a prayer shawl. Okay, what what would be the a uh, normal retail price of whatever that spice thing is? Uh, the little container of spice? Yeah. Give you don't me, have to buy that. Give me a vigilance or perception. As you're just eyeballing the little brass container and figuring out how much it might be worth. I, I feel like he should get a blue dye or two because he is a Hakan. Like... Yep, I'm like if anyone's going to know these things. Yep, he's he's definitely got a blue dice. Chris, okay, uh, I don't tell know me when you you're ready. You Go are for it. muted. I don't know if you've been talking or not. No, I just haven't had anything worth saying that was worth saying. Okay. So you're you're not exactly sure how much this would go, but probably a few hundred uh, credits. A few hundred credits? If if there's something of value in this this bronze little little vial, yeah. Well, no, I no, mean, no, no. Assuming it's just assuming now, it's just the vial. Remember, you're a heck a heck, and you could totally pretend like it was meant for you and just go pick it up. I mean. It wouldn't right. be out of sight. You just saw like 20 Heckins picking up stuff at, at semi-random. And, yeah. you know, the last family members are walking out and you just talk to one of the family members. It wouldn't be unsorted that maybe you're a long-lost cousin. I mean... Yeah. The, okay. the vial's not the main issue. We that That's going to be left for us. The thing is the bug that we need to take and not let somebody else walk off with. Does uh, Percy want to go pick up the vial? Um, yeah. <laughs> no, funeral looting is not common. 
as uh, you pick up the vial and you're heading out with your with your compatriots either in the front or in the rear. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you finally get the vial, you do a quick uh, unscrew the cap, check in it, and check to see what it is. You realize that it is, in fact, a uh, jar that contains spices. They seem very pungent spices. And uh, underneath the spices, there's something inside the jar. It's not just spices. When you shake it, there's like a click-clack of something hidden inside the jar. Um, okay, well, I'm not going it. to look at it. I'm not going to look at it in the middle of the public area. Yep. As soon as you kind of sniff it, you're totally like, ah, this is about 300, you know, credits worth of spices. Are you going to, like, skullduggery pocket it on yourself where no one can see? That's the only thing you can do is kind of put it in your pocket all secret, like. Um, other people might be able to. <laughs> Well, you'd have to hand it off to somebody. That might be suspicious, unless they're your retainers. I'm just going. I'm just going to. Yeah, give it to. Um... Joseph's character. You're gonna hand it off to your to your Simeon friend. Yeah. I, I think apparently we're going like full Ferengi with the funeral acquisitions. Yep. <laughs> we got Ferengi at the funeral wanting the reading of the will. What, what are Hakan if not just furry Ferengi? <laughs> right? <laughs> They're feline Ferengi. They found out the internet was about cats and they changed accordingly. Yep. Cats and blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he hands you the jar, and uh, I mean, do you, do you do anything with it? Do you shove it in your pocket pretty out in the open? Do you sneak secret it away? I'll slide a hand it down into my sleeve. Okay, give me your skullduggery for your sleight of hand to see how covertly you make it disappear. Sure, let me know when. I I'm all ready. Oof! Those wow. dice were turned As, uh, off. The key isn't even uh, in the ignition for those. <laughs> Jesus. As you totally palm it, so obviously everyone sees. <laughs> as as you're totally suave. Totally suave. Rico is suave. <laughs> so, uh, as, as one of you guys is concerned about the whole, uh, you know, radio signal... What do you guys do? I mean, the family members are not in a hurry to leave, but they are joining a little procession with the performers dancing around them. I mean, uh, if you wanted to steal from them or talk to them about purchasing something, you totally could. Out of curiosity, is it um, normal, traditional to offer a sale as they're leaving or during the um, ceremony, is it, do they have like a culturally speaking yard you could sale make, the you next could day? Make the purchase anytime. So it, it's, you know, it's not unknown that during the wake, somebody will come up and say, I will buy that from you right now. Sight unseen for this much money. So you could totally get away with that, without that, without any, you know, social faux pas. But offering 20 credits would probably be an insult. Hey, that's a fancy piece of electronica you got. I'll give you 20 <laughs> bucks for it. <laughs> Bet she's got Sony yeah. guts. Right? <laughs> Might have been easier to just fuck it. But I mean, uh, oh, if... Well. Uh, somebody wants to roll a negotiation, they might be able to figure out about how much that, that, that is worth. I got it. Go ahead and roll when you're ready as you're totally going to appraise with negotiation. As you're like, I think I know what that thing is worth. 
and you're like a thousand credits. Wow. <laughs> it looks like some high end technologies. It's oh. got the technology. Mm. I mean, you can always go up and ask if, if they're willing to sell that. As everything just got <laughs> real quiet. Yeah. I mean, it is late, so I understand that. I guess, you know, nobody seems concerned, so we'll just leave, and when they show up and we're at the next funeral tomorrow for the uh, person. Ooh, somebody is very militant. I mean, I, like I don't that. have the cash or the negotiating power to buy it, so also I'm a fish. <laughs> well, I don't have the skills to swipe it, so, you know. So, hey, we'll just see what happens, I guess. We can always say I told you so. I mean, and on the plus side, you know that you, you totally see where the uh, compound is for the family there. As they totally are taking the, the family clan flags back to the, the little establishment where they live. And you totally see that they're in mourning as some of the performers like stop and just keep doing silly performances to get attention out there. I, I've got a question, though. What's that? Since we know there are communication devices that are that are transmitting, would it be able would we be able to like backtrack the signal to see where it's being sent to? Uh, it's just like a general broadcast type of deal. Oh. But you totally have the frequency to listen in on whatever you know is being talked around the item. As you totally realize that somebody's, you know, jerky nanny cam listening device. That might actually be either more boring or more useful. <laughs> As you're listening to like the background of a dozen people sobbing and mourning with the morning whales. <laughs> For the next few hours, they must wail in in pain and sorrow. Wow, sounds like what was going on next door. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I would like to at least monitor the frequency until we establish a better plan. Okay, you guys gonna like open the jar there, head back to your room, head back to your ship? Suppose we go back to the room at this point. Okay, so who was doing the least at the funeral? I think that's gonna be our uh, Hylar buddy there in his fish tank. Do me a favor and give me a vigilance check. Vigilance. Um, check one thing. You can check two things. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. I only need to check one. Uh, vigilance check it is... Ooh, and a story point. Look at you burning them like nobody's business. I'm loving that. Well, looking at the time. Yep. And the ratio. Okay, ready? Yep. Dang! Oh, wow. No. Okay. Don't see many of those. You don't. <laughs> so, wow, a failure, <sighs> a threat, a triumph. And a despair. So needless to say, on your way back to the hotel, you will be getting stopped in between. So, you didn't notice anything suspicious. It's fine. It's fine. So as uh, you're being super vigilant, 
what would you like uh, to use that triumph for? Can we wait until you hit us with the despair? <laughs> <laughs> I can totally offer you this. So uh, as, as you guys are walking back to the hotel and that little brass jar is feeling very heavy in someone's sleeve, you guys are kind of trying to incognito head back to the apartment through some shortcuts because the problem is this place is a goddamn mess of a maze because it's almost like it was built out of a bunch of crashed spaceships over 500 years ago <laughs> and made for like a fire race, a guy in a fish tank and uh, some scary guys who like the darkness because there's lots of shadows everywhere out here. And uh, as you guys pass through an alley, Heading towards, you can see in the skyline, the apartment complex is like less than three, 400 feet ahead of you guys. You're in the right direction. You're going to get to the room. You're going to get to feel what, what is inside because there's definitely something in that jar full of spices. But as you do, immediately, you guys turn around a corner and uh, you don't really notice it so much as the camera hears the footsteps as a uh, trio of hooded folks come around the corner behind you guys walking almost in perfect sync with you guys it's like eerie because all three of them are walking in perfect unison and their steps are basically in unison with your group as a whole so it doesn't make like extra foot clumpy clumps and then right before, you know, you guys realize they're there, all of a sudden ahead of you about a good, you know, just just at the edge of short distance, a pair of guys dressed in similar hoodies as the one you saw go up and leave the donation come out and kind of like do this little flanky move where they both like just turn around the corner from the left and the right and they're obviously in your way. And they totally stick their hands out and you see like from under their palms, their, what sh where there should be a normal green Winu wrist, there's a metal cylinder that literally goes chink, chink, chink and sticks out from the wrist pointing directly at you guys. It's some kind of weapon. As you know, our tech friend here will totally say it's some kind of cybernetic implanted weapon. Just as you guys look at them, and you turn around to like, hey, maybe we can get away from the fight. You realize there's three behind you. And they totally rise their hands up and you hear the, see the little barrels go chink, chink, chink in perfect unison. And with that, what would you like to use the triumph for? <laughs> okay. Um, um, will... A friendly security guard people show up? Some of the Hakan family came <laughs> loop back around. I mean, what would you like to use it for? I'm I'm hearing some really good suggestions. I mean, even in the uh, suggestion suggestions, some pretty good ones. Yeah, gaining an extra maneuver in the first round of combat. What would you like to use that triumph for? No, I was going to, I was, um, I, I am super open to suggestions. I was thinking that at, at that point, um, the, the, uh, teenage security guard that, um, Percy seduced would come about now, but I would rather have the security guard show up if that's an option. That's totally an option. I will totally narrate that in there. Yeah. That all of a sudden, because you are with an eye shot of your apartment, and for your triumph, when all this shit's happening, where there's two guys in front of you, three guys behind you, you guys look and look, all of a sudden, over the shoulder of one of the guys, you totally see Percy! Percy! And she jumps up because she saw you in the alleyway and she's oblivious to the two guys between you guys having weapons pointed at you because it just looks like mm. two weird monks waving their hands out Hitler style. And she's like, Percy! I, 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 I'm off duty so I came back for some more fun. 
and that just as and she, she is shot in the back of the head. oblivious, <laughs> well, no, she's behind them, you know, often like the parking oh. lot, but she totally spotted okay. her, her new, new best friend. And uh, she is excited mm. to see that you guys are in the alleyway over there with your hood, strange hoodie friends. Yeah, apparently she had a bad perception check, but she spotted Percy. And uh, just as she's yelling to you guys before you can warn her or ask for help, which is totally a thing for one of you guys to totally do, that's a good place to wrap it up there. As uh, you totally have her there for backup on the fight, which, by the way, you know she's competent with her weapon, and she does have a sidearm. She's competent with someone's weapon. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It'd roll failure. Well, she is. He isn't. Um, yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> she's going to have to take control this time. Did we get her name? I didn't write it down. I wasn't interested at the time. Uh, I don't think a name was ever even given. Yeah. Sh shows you how selective Percy is. <laughs> yeah. Percy didn't, Percy didn't care about names. Uh, and she is Officer Zena. Sounds like a medication. Officer Z snacks. Oh, <laughs> or wow. should I say? <laughs> <laughs> and she's totally doing that, you know, that movie bit where they're just waving oblivious to the gun wielding maniacs between you. <laughs> they don't even acknowledge her yet. It's that soon that uh, they're interested in you for some reason. Mainly because the despair came up. That's exactly why they're interested in you. Who knew that they were watching you while you were watching them? Who watches the watchers? I, well, I tried to say we got issues. but <laughs> Obviously, our avian friend is very cautious, very peculiar. And he obviously goes, <laughs> Ah, well, and, be and you all get ten experience. Woohoo! And if Evan asks how much, we tell him you all got thirty experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, all of a sudden he will probably be showing up in the middle of combat. <laughs> I mean, that totally oh, that makes sense. Say. He must have been staying in the room, keeping it secure. Don't want your room to be ransacked while you're gone. Bodyguard right. paranoia. Okay. Exactly. I'm gonna crash. All right. Have okay. a good night, guys. Hey, good, good night, night. guys. Good night. Thank you. It was fun. See you guys in two weeks. Because thankfully, me. all the things are over with now. No fireworks. No cons. No. No. Nothing exciting to mess with game time. Yep, and next month is August, and nothing happens in August. Nothing happens in August because everything is yeah. hot and hot. However, yeah. there will be a RPG a day for August. They've already released the questionnaire. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so that's my, really fun. My board game and barbecue event happens in August. Ooh, yeah, that nice. sounds fun. Yeah. Except yeah, keep the barbecue like... sauce away from the games. Well, okay. yeah, that's the... Uh... I've, but, re I've resigned myself to two realities of living in D.C. There are no decent board game uh, stores. In fact, there's effectively zero community for it at all. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's oh. heinous. Uh, and Your there food? is no Mexican food. It just isn't. Wow. That there, uh, there's a There's some kind of a game place in Arlington. Yeah. Maybe in Arlington because it's an obscenely rich area. Um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. I'd have to look up. We ne I didn't make it there, but it looked like kind of a game bar kind of thing. But yeah. So as uh, Optimus in... Prime said, if you can hear this message, gamers in Washington D.C., contact Joseph to get some <laughs> gaming going. It's, it's so bad. <laughs> that sucks. The, I, I don't know how close it is, but there is apparently a pretty good game store in Baltimore. Yeah, it's, it's, depending on which side of Baltimore, that's 45 minutes to an hour and a ah. half. 
away. Just the whole yeah. cross commute waterway. Yeah. Kerfuffle. Unless, of course, I do the drive at rush hour, then it's just kind of fucked. <laughs> oh, that's that's merciful. Oh, I like I said, I don't know the geography um, east of the Cascades. So yeah, Bo- Baltimore is not far from DC. Obviously, Percy is meowing right now as my cat. <laughs> He's like, you done playing? We can play now? You can give me food? It's time for food. I don't know where you went, but you didn't come back with food. Right. Though uh, he did enjoy, we, when we went to, to the property, one of the roads was washed out, so we had to walk like a good three quarters of a mile to a mile. But it's all wet red clay so my boots and pants came back soaked in clay so the cat spent an hour going off just the pants it's like <laughs> what is all this wildlife i sense yeah no doubt I'm like whoa so all righty all all righty and we will have uh-huh. combat starting first thing next time but you do have potential backup if you want to use it yeah Woo-hoo. yeah Figure out what to do with that 10 XP. And then all of a sudden, our bodyguard will pop up on the side view of camera going, hey, guys, chewing on some of those cool cakes. And he's like, hey, did you make some friends here with the monks? <laughs> These are new monks. So now we know the let All right. But the scary thing is they're not, they're not the Letnev, the, the Wenu. Oh, no, the, sorry, which, the Wenu. Sorry, which yes. the Letnev yeah. totally have some sub- subcultures that they brought with them, like you know, because of course the the L one Z one EX are ridiculously evil people because they they forcibly put jacks in people's heads, which like, is uh, why they are in unison. Mm-hmm. And these these people are all moving in unison, and you do remember the Wenu serve the the. The Lennox, so, you know, when they, these guys, they, they could have taken some servants, and, and which they totally did, by the way. But that <laughs> is a roll for another time. Yeah, well, we'll okay. deal with them. Yep. Uh, I, I have faith you in guys. You guys have a good Especially one. Especially now that you've got more experience in your belt. Oh, All yeah. All right. Night, All guys. Right. All right. Good night. All right. Bye. And everybody's lip type till we game again, which we got a game tomorrow, so get the game on. Some sleep on, all that good stuff.